No, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, I did not think that last sketch was very right on at all. I did not like it. I mean, me, I come out with all this clever stuff about the multinationals and the third world debt and the responsibility of the banks. But don't you think, don't you think all the time I'm going on and on and on. Small penis. <laughs> Fun fairs have got to be taking the piss. The ghost train, for example, is an extraordinary idea that the ghost train is meant to be as terrifying as other things in the horror genre. They went on a ride they would never forget. First, they had to face the skeleton that was made of cardboard. And it didn't quite pop out at the right time. The five-year-olds in the seat in front screamed. <gasps> sarcastically. <laughs> they were forced to confront dark questions, like what's supposed to be frightening about going through some double doors. <laughs> and then, just when they thought it was all over, it was. A common problem with fun fairs is getting confused by the caravans and going to the fun fair only to find out that it is in fact some gypsies. <laughs> Still, you can always have a laugh Dad, Dad, I want to go on the pile of burnt mattresses. <laughs> Fun fairs are never fair, as we know from the Tenants LA advert where the bloke with the big nose discovers that the coconuts in the shy are glued down. Of course, that advert isn't that realistic, as in the real world, instead of getting away with the cuddly toy, the bloke with the big nose would have been taken around the back of the caravan generators and shot. <laughs> they would have put one of those pellet rifles from the shoot the duck stall in his mouth and pulled the trigger, and it would have missed. <laughs> But like, they're, they're all rip-offs, like the dart stall where you like, have to hit some playing cards. I mean, the rules of real darts are just dead simple, as otherwise Jockey Wilson wouldn't be able to play. <laughs> but with funfair darts, no one could be expected to understand the rules. Jockey, you require to hit the jack and then the ten and then any selection of red cards minus the total you get from the first two darts. <laughs> One hundred and eighty pounds you've spent on this stall without even winning an Elvis Presley mirror. Still, what the fun fairs do have to recommend them is the personnel, because, you know, the staffing is excellent. And it's good, you know, to warm glow you have inside, thinking they haven't just employed anyone here. So, you've applied for a job on the airborne rocket water of death. I should remind you that in that position you'll be working with A, children, and B, highly specialised and extremely dangerous equipment. So the two things we do require of all our employers is A, a facial tattoo, and B, a criminal record. <laughs> this week's story comes from The Indy. For anyone who doesn't know, The Indy, produced by The Independent, is a newspaper for children. Rather like John Craver's news round, only without a toss pot in an Aaron sweater. <laughs> The trouble with John Craver's newsroom, of course, is that it doesn't have children in editorial control, which would be a good idea in political programmes generally. Because what I'd like to see is next time the Employment Secretary goes on television and gives us a rundown of the government employment figures, or next time the Health se Secretary tells us how much they're spending on the NHS, I'd like the interviewer, David Dimbleby or whatever, to let them finish and then go, Oh, chinny recon. <laughs> oh, Jimmy Hill. Now, The Indy, despite the age of its readership, is a paper which can often bring fresh and original insights into many of the major issues which face us today. The letters page in particular demonstrates the paper's maturity, with correspondents tackling such issues as racism, green politics and this letter, which comes from the 2nd of January edition. This is an absolutely genuine letter and, amazingly, it was written by a nine-year-old. Dear Indy, I am nine years old, and I used to have a very nice girlfriend up until yesterday. My friends were jealous of me and started spreading rumours about me not being able to wipe my bottom after I go to the loo. <laughs> they said I have to get the teachers to do it. <laughs> she believed them and dumped me. Please can you help me? Yours sincerely, Captain Mark Phillips. <laughs> No, it wasn't from Mark Phillips. It was actually from a boy called Alex, who lives in Sussex. Uh, it was such a brilliant letter that I actually cut it out of the indie. Uh, now, what I'd like to say is that it's all very well to laugh, but one remembers how cruel school children can be. And so, Alex, we at the Mary Whitehouse Experience would therefore like to say on the television... Oh, 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 o
I find this whole matter utterly pure and not worthy of serious discussion and so does my wife. Or at least she would had she not left me two days ago following a spate of rumours suggesting that I can't wipe my bottom after I go to the loo. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we feel it is our public duty to warn you of a grievous malpractice that may be at the bottom of many of today's social ills. It appears that for some time now, there is a group of people who have been, I can hardly bring myself to say it, taking two bottles into the shower. <laughs> Shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> I mean, who are all these maniacs? I mean, it's just so stupid. Okay, Rob, calm down, okay? Look, thank I God. Mean, it's unbelievably stupid! <laughs> there are other people, and I've seen them on the telly, who are at last beginning to speak out on this issue. Shampoo and conditioner? <laughs> Take two bottles into the shower? Not me. I'd just spend my time looking in other people's lockers. <laughs> and and what, I, what I particularly like about the work of this pressure group is that their very tone of voice, absolutely filled with contempt and disbelief, expresses exactly how this shampoo and conditioner behaviour is on a par with the worst excesses of humanity. Shampoo and conditioner? Take two bottles into the shower? Get my mother to sleep with a donkey. <laughs> Exhume a recently buried corpse and smear its blood all over Mother Teresa's face. Not me. I just want to wash and go. Why people can't realise the immense benefits of using wash and go is beyond me. I mean, think of the problems Janet Lee alone could have avoided in Psycho. as well is a really constructivist name for a product. That is, it's known off like what you do with it and what you do immediately afterwards. So like, Eat and Go is the new designer name for all brand. <laughs> of course, Wash and Go is made by Vidal Sassoon. And the thing about Vidal Sassoon is, with a name like that, he just had to become a hairdresser. I mean, like, what else could he have done? He's back. He's angry. It's Vidal Sassoon. But what I really think they should have is shampoo and conditioner, take two bottles into the shower, not me, I'm Duncan Goodhue. <laughs>